The following podcast is a Sempronto Media production. Hey guys, I'm so excited to introduce to you Catherine Muldoon, and she is an amazing friend, and she also has, in my opinion, the most perfect body. Like, um... I just, she does. She, I'm telling you, I hope that you guys can look at her in a bathing suit. Cause you just be like, oh my gosh, she has like, if I could pick anyone's body to have, it would be hers. She just has an amazing body. She's drop dead gorgeous. And she has taught me so much about how to be a thin eater and how to eat less. And so I just decided to bring her on the show to kind of just talk to you a little bit about some of the, I feel like she's taught me so much. And so I want to kind of translate that to you. You'll be able to hear some of her tidbits here today, um, but she's also in our video course. So if you want to hear it even more in detail, you can see her and other thin eaters on our video course that can really teach you how to have an incredible body. So Catherine, welcome. Tell listeners a little bit about yourself and Thanks. just talk about how your why your smile is so beautiful. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I am, um, my name is Dr. Catherine Muldoon. I am on... Um, self-proclaimed girly girl, like I love everything girly. Um, but I am also a dentist and former Miss Virginia USA and former Miss New York Teen USA. And so I kind of know everything beauty, but I'm a dentist by training. And so um, I focused my new company, Smile Concierge Club, on marrying the teledentistry component with everything cosmetic about dentistry. So it's basically a, um, a teledentistry hybrid with a traditional practice where we do anything and everything cosmetic. Um, so I actually haven't done it yet. I have, you know, I'm a dental patient of many years, but I'm actually going to like be redoing some of my work. So if you want to see what I do on my own teeth, um, so, you know, certainly follow me on Instagram, uh, Smile with Ears Club, or on Facebook, or anything else that says Smile with Ears Club. It'll be on there too. But yeah, awesome. that's a little bit about me. Well, I want you to to kind or of or you can go on my TikTok. I am actually in a bathing suit. On oh. TikTok. And listen, you have to follow. <laughs> you have to follow my son. My son is on TikTok. His name is Kyle Finch, and he is like he's really wanting people to follow him on TikTok. Yeah. He loves it. So make I'll sure we him. get him to follow him. So okay, so I want to talk about the story. And this just happened maybe a couple months ago when you came down to visit, and we were sitting outside. And it's actually happened twice. I remember it. We were sitting outside. We went to North End Juice Company and we sat down. You were eating your food. And then halfway through, I remember saying, Are you finished with your meal? And you're like, Nope, I'm just taking a break. And it just, I don't do it on purpose. You're actually the only one who like actually made me think about it. But well, I mean, just, it's almost like into it, it's intuitive that you do it. Yeah, I just, I do it because I think probably because I don't eat all day. So my stomach is small. So a lot of times like I'll be eating and I'm enjoying my food, but like I start to feel a little bit full and then, but I like, I'm not done with it because I notice so often I'll go out to eat and then I'll eat. And then when I get home, I will eat again. So <laughs> I'm just a picker. I like to pick at my food and like graze with my food. If I'm eating at home, I'll literally like make a meal and then leave it out and then just like Take a little bite here, a little bite there, like little snacks throughout the day. Um, so usually what time do you <laughs> usually start eating your first meal? What time? Mm -hmm. Late. Like, gosh. I wake up, I have coffee every morning. Um, I do this new like skinny brew coffee. So, oh my gosh. <coughs> I hope it's not coronavirus. It's not, it's high allergies. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that being said, um, yeah. So probably like, I don't even pay attention to it when I'm working, um, uh, one o'clock only because that's like when our designated lunch break is, but like half the time I'll work through my lunch anyway. Um, but otherwise it's maybe like six o'clock, seven o'clock. Honestly, like my first meal is pretty late. I have my first meal, which is coffee in the morning. There are calories in coffee, but then maybe like two o'clock Lately, since I've been in quarantine, I have a smoothie because I start to get a little bit hungry around like that two o'clock time. But I've been trying to focus on making sure I get all my antioxidants. So, like I'll make it like a kale smoothie, and like maybe one or two, and then um, and then have like a real meal. <laughs> later. Okay, so I want to talk about that. I want to talk about that because that. <coughs> 
basically one of the things that I hear so many thin eaters talk about is they basically have what they call a meal and a snack or a meal and a tasting. So one of their meals is a larger meal and then medium to large meal. And then one of their meals is either a smoothie or it's just a, something small. It's not like this huge meal. And so you basically, you know, one of the things I love about you is like, when I kind of talk to you about when you eat, you're one of the people that taught me about intermittent fasting, but you weren't even like trying to do intermittent fasting. You were just no, you actually made like all the things that I do. Cause I feel like you've got us all together. You're like, okay, what do you do, Missy? What do you do? And then like, you got everyone yes. together and I'm like, oh, there are actually similarities, similarities. And like what a lot of people who are, don't even really think about it. Like I never really think about what, you know, I've done. I, I have thought about it. There's certainly times in my life when I'm like preparing for a pageant where I like, I'm very thoughtful about what I'm eating. Um, but in, even in my, you know, after a pageant, I don't like go and like gain a ton of weight. Um, I think probably cause I have these things, but, um, yeah, I, but it's these I thin habits. Eat. It's these thin he- eater habits that you don't even know you're doing them, but it's me spending that time. And that's why I wrote my book because I was like, I noticed you doing it. I noticed this one doing it and they didn't even know they were doing it. That's mm-hmm. what I say. They don't even know they're intermittent fasting. They just go, mm, I'm not really that hungry until around one or two o'clock around one or two. I'm going to have something small. I'm either going to have a smoothie. I'm going to have a small salad. I'm going to have whatever it is that I want. It's like a tasting. And then at six o'clock, now I'm going to have my dinner. Yeah, that's exactly how I do it. And I have noticed a lot of my friends do the same thing. I mean, it's like that in every profession, right? Like a lot of people will like for with teeth, for example, even other dentists will come to me and they're like, okay, something's off about this smile. What is it? And like, if you're trained to like, look for certain things and you've seen it over and over again, like some people just like have this eye it's in any profession. Like a lot of times people will say, you know, this house doesn't look nice. What is it? And a decorator would come and be like, oh, because you have to do this and this, the same thing with teeth. Like, I'm like, you know, what doesn't look right about this smile? And I can like, I know it's the same thing. I feel like you're doing the same thing with nutrition where you're like, okay, she's skinny she does this. What is she doing? And you're kind of like turning it into a regimen, which is great. You know, I, I, a lot of the stuff I never even noticed, but now that I notice it more, I'm like, don't feel guilty that I don't have breakfast my whole life. Everyone's like, you need to have breakfast. It's the most important meal of the day. And I'm like, I don't have time. I just (laughs) rush to get to work. I don't know about you guys, but I've been doing a ton of cooking lately. And I've been having so many new recipes. Go to ChantelRayWay.com slash free recipes to get the best kale dressing recipe you'll ever have. The dairy-free artichoke dip that you will love for completely free. I also want to give you my entire free smoothie book that has the best smoothies. One of the things that can help you lose weight is just to replace one of your meals with an amazing smoothie. So if you're eating two meals, just make one of them a smoothie. You can get my free amazing recipe book at chantelrayway.com slash free recipe. And our protein shakes are amazing as well. And right now they're 30% off. Go to chantelrayway.com, click on store and use podcast for the 30% off your protein shake. I know it's, it's unbelievable that a lot of people say, once I found out that the, the guy who made Kellogg's cereal is the one who made those advertising campaigns that said breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And obviously it would make sense that the guy who's selling Kellogg cereal wants you to think and brainwash you over and over and over that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And until I started skipping breakfast and started doing intermittent fasting, I couldn't lose the weight. So let's talk a little bit about the fact that you take those breaks because now what I'm teaching people to do is to trying to eat at least in a 20 minute window, um, but taking a five minute break in between. It's the most powerful thing that I've done so far yet. And I'm literally timing it on my phone, physically on my iPhone, going in and putting in, you know, okay, here's the timer. I'm putting in exactly how long I'm, you know, going to eat and checking it. And it's very difficult for me to eat in a 25 minute window. 
I have to work extraordinarily hard to do it. But that five minute break in between where I just literally sit and stop eating, expand on how you do that. And, you know, what point do you say, okay, I'm going to start taking a break now? Honestly, I don't, I, it's not a conscious decision for me. Um, I like, I don't set a timer on my phone. Um, maybe it's at like half. I'm not sure. I just kind of like, like halfway, once you finish eating about halfway through. Yeah. Maybe that's it. I think maybe it's halfway because a lot of times I'll, I find that the portions that are served in the United States are far too big. Like everywhere you go, almost the portions are almost your total daily intake. So a lot of times I'll look at meals and think I'm going to have this for lunch and dinner, or I'm going to have this for dinner and lunch tomorrow. Cause I just think the meal, the, the meals that are served in the U S are just so astronomically large. So a lot of times I look at my meal as if it's going to be two meals. And so I'll like stop halfway through just, maybe it's just cause I'm cheap. Um, but like, but then I'm like, uh, you know, if I still want to eat after that, then I'll pick on it. But I find that if you stop about halfway through your, your body almost catches up. So I feel like sometimes if you're really hungry and then you just like scarf your food down, you almost end up being like more full. And then you're like, Oh, I ate too much. But if you stop and then let your body actually comprehend the fact that there's actually food in there, then you're not even hungry anymore. And then you're just like, Oh, I want to have a little bite of this and a little bite of that. Afterwards. Do you remember this story that um, where the lady, we were out to eat one time and the waitress came up to us like every, because you had taken a break and she kept on asking, can you share that? It happens every single time. I okay. Go. Tell the, tell, I want you to really describe that in detail because I've had that happen. I've, I've gone out to lunch with you or dinner with you and I've seen that happen over and over. So tell the story. Yeah. I like to keep my food until the very last second. Like I like to pick at stuff. So I want like most people, I think when you stop eating, the waiters always come to my table, always come and they'll come like multiple times. And I'm like, I'm not done yet. Like, <laughs> I, I get like a little crazy about it. And sometimes I have to be like, you know what? It's a, if it's okay, I want to keep this until I leave. Like I want my, but some people aren't like that. Some people want to eat and then they want their table cleaned. And so that's considered to be good customer service. For me, I think of it's more of like a European thing maybe where, I, you know, I'm not European, but um, what I've noticed is people will eat for like long periods of time. And then, you know, a lot of times like I'll have like a little couple bites of my appetizer, but then I want to keep that. And then sometimes they'll want to take it away. And I'm like, no, it's okay. Like just keep the appetizer. You can bring my meal here because I'll leave it all on the table, kind of like a big grazing board of like, oh, I think I'll have a little bit of this. And then, oh, I think I know another little piece of that. And then I just, you know, that's for me, it's like a big grazing board uh, dinner table. But I know not everyone is like that, but I have to make a, it, I very consciously have to tell people I'm, I'm going to keep my food if that's okay. <laughs> what, <laughs> what I've observed you do is pretty much about the halfway mark. So let's just say you've got, you know, some grilled chicken, some broccoli and potatoes. You're eating about half of it. And then you literally take a break and you'll take a break for maybe three to four minutes. And then all of a sudden you might take another bite and you'll take another bite of the, the broccoli. And then you, you stop again. And then you're, you know, so you're, you eat pretty consistently for that first, let's say 10 minutes that you're eating the first 10 minutes you're eating bites, you're putting your fork down. But then once you get to that halfway mark, now you're taking just little, small, small bites. And even pausing after that, you're almost taking like a three to five minute break and just assessing whether or not you're continuing to, to be full or not. And then you kind of maybe a couple more minutes later, you might take one or two more bites. And then, then you're like, oh, I'm finished. Now I'm completely done. Hey guys, one of the things that will take your weight loss to the next level is coaching. You can either work one-on-one -on -one with me 
or one of our certified private coaches. If you'd like, you can schedule your free call. It's a 10 minute strategy call just to see if coaching is going to really take you to the next level. The other thing is listening to the audiobook. Listening to the audiobook and getting the video course that I've done, people are seeing dramatic results. If you just listen to the audiobook 30 minutes a day over and over and over again and get the video course, go to ChantelRayway.com and check out the video course. You won't be sorry you did. Okay, so describe to people one more time what that looks like of taking that break as much as you possibly can. Again, this is not like a conscious thing for me, but from what you've told me and then me actually thinking about it, it's like uh, I will eat about half my meal, maybe a quarter to half. And then um, then I assess how much more I want to eat um, and just take a break and, you know, have a conversation, have a sip of, you know, whatever I'm having to drink. And then, um, and then I go for my little perfect bites after that to see how hungry I am. Um, but then I'll usually just continue just to have little bites here and there, but I usually don't let them take the food away from me. <laughs> so how often would you say, cause I think that what I've kind of seen is that some days you either have one meal, and then you have a tasting, something small, a smoothie or something small. And then sometimes you just say, you know what, I'm just going to have that one meal for dinner. I'm, I'm going to work all the way through and I'm not going to actually eat until dinner. Talk about when do you decide, like if you're feeling like mm, maybe I need to lose one or two pounds, maybe I'll just eat dinner or it's just because I'm you're busy or what kind of runs through your mind when you make that decision of, a, I'm get, am I going to eat one meal or a meal and a tasting for that day? Um, really, it just depends on if I'm hungry or not. If my body's telling me to eat, like I'm like, oh, I'm hungry, then I'll make a meal throughout the day. Or I don't like this one because sometimes I feel like I gained weight this way. But if I was at work and then I had a pause and I had an actual lunch break, then I'll it's almost like someone tells you it's lunch break. So you should go eat. But like, I think that actually made me gain weight because it's like, I would just eat just because I was supposed to not because I was actually hungry. So if when I'm, you know, like, especially during quarantine, if I'm hungry for that two o'clock something, or I'm not doing a podcast and I go want to go eat, then I'll go make a smoothie. But if I'm not hungry, I just don't like, don't eat. It's really not rocket science. Like a lot of times (laughs) people like, if you're hungry, eat. If you're not hungry, don't eat. Like, but a lot of times people, I think, get in this like habitual eating pattern. Like, oh, I have to eat at this time, and then I have to eat at this time, and it's like they're eating at these times just because they're supposed to, or they're eating at dinner because everyone else is, um, and you're supposed to, not because they're actually hungry. So I remember when I came down uh, to visit you in New York, and we were at like a little bar area. And the guy came up and he brought a bunch of snacks to our table. And it was just so awesome to watch you eat these chips. I wish I could have taken it. Oh my gosh. All the way people make fun of me for eating these freaking chips. Okay. But I want you to try to describe to people how little bites and how you literally evaluate the different bites of how you get the best. Yes, I notice everything. This is what, that's what my job is. That's why I wrote a book to literally describe how thin eaters eat. So try to describe that. Like grab a thing of chips and show you. But okay, so people have so many people, like not so many people, but a couple people have noticed this and they like make fun of me eating chips this way so hard. They're like, you literally look at every single bite. Like I do the same thing with sandwiches too. I don't notice that I'm doing it. I just do it. But with a bag of chips, I don't know if I'm going to eat the whole bag of chips. I just don't know. When I start, like if I'm hungry, I'll eat it. Like, but I don't know if I'm going to eat the whole bag of chips. So, Hey guys, I wanted to tell you I'm offering a free weight loss virtual Bible study. Now is the perfect time to focus on understanding true hunger and fullness and learn what the Bible has to say about it. All you have to do is go to ChantelRayway.com slash Bible study. After you sign up, you'll receive a six week Bible study video that you can watch on your own, or you can get a small group of people and do it together. That's ChantelRayway.com slash Bible study for your free six week Bible study course. 
when having- you're talking about a bag of chips, by the way, so what you guys know, we're talking about like the snack size bag of chips. We're not talking about like a huge bag of chips. We're talking about a smaller size snack bag of chips, but go ahead. But like, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know how much I'm going to eat of it. Uh, and like, especially cause like at that time, you know, if you have like barbecue chips and then you have sour cream and onion, and then you have these, like you can't eat 10 bags of chips. Like everyone knows you can't. And then, and then like we had a whole smorgasbord of like snack stuff. So I like to have like a little taste of everything, but if there, it's my bag of chips and I'm going to decide like, which I'm going to have, I want to have the best chip and I want to have the best bite. So like, I think I've never seen chips being manufactured before. But um, if you really look at the chips hard, one side has, like, I think what they do is they manufacture the chip and must go, like, on a little conveyor belt, and they go across, and there must be something that, like, salts them or flavors them from above. So they're going on the conveyor belt. And so usually if you actually look at chips, um, <clears throat> the, there's usually one side that has all the flavor particles on it, and then the, the other side is plain. <clears throat> Um, same thing with Pringles. It's like the opposite side. It's supposed to be. So if anyone from Pringles is watching this, you have to turn on the other side. So the, it should be at the tongue side, like Pringles is shaped like your tongue, but the flavor's on the wrong side of it anyway, but it chips. There is like flavor on one side and then some of them like get more flavor on them than others. So I literally like look in my chip bag for the ones that have like a lot of flavoring on them. And then I'll pick that one and I'll eat the side of the chip that has the flavor. Yeah, that's just what awesome. I do. Yeah, and then <laughs> and then you would. I remember because the guy. I, I'm sure he was probably like, "Oh my gosh, this girl's so beautiful." So he came over and was like, "Here, ladies, here's a whole bunch of snacks." And he put like it was it Everything. was Catherine and me and one other girl, and he literally was like sour cream and onion and barbecue and this and that. And Catherine opened a little bit of each of the bags. And then had a little bit of this one and broke the chip. Literally, there were some chips that she would break into like one chip and they would only be this big. She'd break it into six pieces. No, I'm not like that. Maybe I'd like two. Me too. (laughs) I'm not like, like I've seen people like, gosh, if you look at like, okay, I noticed this on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills brandy. She's like this. She literally eats like a little piece. Like she'll eat like one French fry in like 10 bites. Like I'm not like that. <laughs> that that uh, in depth, but I yeah. definitely do eat the side of the chip. You're there. definitely savoring each bite. That is for sure. Yeah. I have the side of the chip that has the flavor on it for sure. <laughs> Well, this has been awesome. Tell listeners where they can find you, where they can follow you, and tell them how they can get an amazing white smile as well. So um, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok. Those are my main sources, and they're all Smile Concierge Club, one word. Pretty easy. Or smileconciergeclub.com. But all three of those mediums, I actually do put probably different content on each of them. Um, so here's my little um, routine. Um, on, on Instagram, you're supposed to be glamorous, right? So I typically will put like glammy kind of photos on Instagram. But if you follow me on Facebook, uh, I will show you all the tips and tricks to get there. So I'll do, I'll basically get ready live on Facebook, then I'll switch to Instagram and do a glammy, whatever I'm planning to do that's glammy. Um, and then TikTok's just to be really stupid and it's a little bit more racy. So if you're conservative, you might not want to follow me on TikTok. Um, but the content isn't super dental related currently. Um, but it will be, it'll show a lot of more like before and afters, but being like goosey about it. So these are the three mediums. Um, and then there's, you know, all our serious stuff on smileconciergeclub.com. And guys, I have literally seen Catherine <clears throat> transform people's smile. And the crazy part is she can literally mail you these kits and she never has to even you, she never even has to see you physically. Like it's the most craziest thing you can do at all. I wanted to get a sculpture <laughs> of my teeth and she did, did it all via the mail. So you've got to contact her. She can literally transform your smile into something amazing. So thank yeah, you. Yeah. And we have everything. A lot of people think these mail things are just clear aligners. Um, but literally everything that I do in like the highest end of dental office. And if you want to travel to where I am, um, or see me in Virginia or New York. I'm happy to see if the person has a patient as well. But if you want me to work with your dentist, I, I can do that also. But we have everything and every anything and everything cosmetic for 
for teeth. Um, but it starts with the whitening kit and, um, and then we're going to, you know, expand from there. Awesome. Well, you guys stay tuned. We have another episode coming up in just a minute. Bye-bye for now. Hey guys, if you enjoyed today's interview, I want to really encourage you to get the video course. You can hear more from Catherine on the video course and really learn from all the thin eaters that I interviewed. And you can actually physically see them eat and learn the most amazing tips to keep you looking thin.